In this video, we will take the loot being dropped by our enemies and actually hook it up to an inventory system. Let's get started. There's going to be two main parts to this process. The first is going to be creating an empty object called an inventory manager. This is going to actually just handle all of the items we collect from our enemies. And then in the second part, we'll show how to hook it up to an inventory system. So let's head into our scripts folder, create a new C -sharp script, and we'll just call this one inventory manager. We'll hook that up to our inventory manager game object. We're going to do something a little different this time around. We're going to create a dictionary. Now, dictionary works sort of like an array, except that it holds pairs of data, a key and a value. In our case, the key is going to be our loot type, and the value will be the quantity of that loot that we have. So for example, our dictionary might hold coffee with a quantity of three, burger with a quantity of two, etc. We'll call this our inventory, and we have to initialize it at the beginning. So we'll just make it equal to a new dictionary with the same factors here, a loot type and integer for quantity. We won't need our start or update method at this point, but we are going to need to create a new method called add item, which we will just call every time we collect a new item. Now for this method to work, it is going to need some information. Specifically, it will need to know what type of loot we've just collected, as well as how many of that item we have. So for example, when we defeat a robot and a coffee pops up in the air, it will call this method telling us that we got a coffee with, say, a quantity of two. We'll then check to see if our inventory, that's our dictionary, already contains that loot type. Now if it does have that, say, coffee, what it's going to do right now is just find that coffee key and add whatever value we just collected to the quantity we already have. Now let's say we don't already have a coffee. We'll use this else statement then to add coffee to our dictionary. We'll also add the quantity of the coffee. So where there was an empty line, we'll now have coffee with, say, a quantity of two. Now we actually need to call this method, and to do that, we'll go back to our loot drop script. So all our loot will have to have a reference to our inventory manager. We'll call it inventory manager. And because this is a prefab, we're not going to be able to drag and drop the reference within Unity in the inspector. Instead, we're going to have to code it in. So we'll head to our start method here. Now, as soon as any loot comes into the game, it will run this method, which is just going to help it find the inventory manager. It'll start by searching for that game object we already created called inventory manager. And once it's found it, it will look on that object for the component called inventory manager, same name. So first it'll find the object, then the script on that object. Now we're able to talk to the inventory manager. Now because our loot pops into the game and we have it as soon as it appears in the game, we can call add item immediately after finding the inventory manager. So once it's found the script, it will just right away add the item to our inventory. That brings us back to the inventory manager here, where at this point we don't have any way of testing, so we're just going to do a quick debug so that we can actually see what items we've collected so far. So now, for each item in our inventory, we'll run a debug log. So say it was uh, coffee in the first slot, this would debug coffee plus, I just put a colon in here because it looks nice, and then the value of the coffee, so say three. And it would do that for each item currently in our inventory. So now, when we test the game and our archers come out and start firing, we can look at our console, and as soon as that first item pops, you'll see that it told us coin, colon, five. That's our entire inventory at this point. And the next time it tells us the coin 5, but it also adds the coffee value. All right, so our inventory manager is working quite nicely in collecting items. Now we want some visuals, though, so that we can actually see an inventory filling up as we collect the items. We'll start by just creating our UI. And anytime I do this, I like to set my game view side by side with my scene so I can see how it's actually going to look on camera. We'll add a UI canvas here. I'll call this one our item canvas. I'll double click it just so we can see the entire canvas. Next I'm going to add a UI panel. I'll call this one slot one and then just resize it and change the appearance as this will be the backdrop for our first item slot. Now on that item we're going to need to have an image. This will contain the sprite of the item that we've collected. I've actually added an empty sprite which is literally just a sprite with nothing in it that I can use for when I don't have an item. I'll resize that so that it fits the box fairly nicely. And then I'm also going to add a UI Text Mesh Pro. And this is just going to be the text that actually displays what quantity of that item we've collected so far. We can now just make that look nice and move it to the bottom corner. 
I'll now duplicate my slots and slide them all into place. I'm going to go with three items, but you can do as many as you'd like. And then I'll just rename them in a way that makes sense, slot one, two, and three. All right, so back in our inventory manager script, I now just want to make a reference to that image and to the text mesh pro we made. Now, if you try to reference an image right off the bat, it's not going to like that. That's because we need to import the unityengine.ui namespace so that we have access to those UI elements. This one's actually going to be an array. We'll call it loot images. And then I'm also going to do the same thing for my TextMess Pro text. Once again, you'll have to import the library. So TM Pro. This one's also an array. And we'll just call this one loot quantities. So the beauty of using an array here is that it allows you to dynamically change the length of the array depending on how many items you want to have. So while I'm using three, you could be using five. And it just means you have to drag five items into your array instead of three. In Unity, you can see that at work. And right now, I'll just drag the images in here as well as the quantities. Now, you'll notice I made a little mistake here. On the first one, I actually dragged the slot into that first slot as opposed to the item image. I'll fix that later on, but if you want to fix that right now, you'll save yourself trouble later on. All right, now that we're able to talk to the image and to the Text Mesh Pro, we actually want to fill those with some information. Now, the quantity is already saved in our dictionary, so we don't have to do anything special for that just now. However, our images aren't currently stored anywhere. There's nothing in our game that knows what sprite to display for which item. So we'll make those references here. I'll make a public sprite and then just one for each of the items in my game. So a coin sprite, burger sprite, and coffee sprite. If you've never done it this way before, you can actually save yourself some space by putting commas between each variable rather than writing public sprite before each one. All right, now we can come down into our add item method where we can get rid of that debug log as we're actually going to make our inventory update now and we won't need that. So remember once again that in our dictionary we have pairs of information, which is our key, the loot type, and its value, the integer for the quantity. And so what we just want to do now is, first of all, give each item in our dictionary an index number. So the first item in our dictionary will be 0, the next one 1, etc. And that way they can correspond to all of the images and quantities in our arrays. So the first item in our inventory, item 0, will correspond to image 0 and quantity 0, etc. Now, in order to give them an index, what we just have to do is create a local variable here. So for each item in the inventory, it's going to get an integer called loot index. And here we're just going to perform some arcane wizardry where we're going to take the item's key, so say coffee or burger, and we're just going to cast it as an integer, meaning it'll just make the first item in the list a 0, the next one a 1, etc. At this point, now that it has an index, we can actually start to populate our UI image and quantity with actual information. We could type loot images zero, and that would get our first loot image. But obviously, depending on which item we look at, we want to update a different inventory slot. So we'll do loot images, and then in square brackets, we'll just put the actual index. And all we want to do is make sure that the image's sprite is equal to. And here we're going to create a new method, which we'll call get sprite for loot. When we call this get sprite for loot method, we're just going to pass in the item key, so coffee, burger, etc that we actually want to get the sprite for. We'll then make this method down below, which is going to be a private sprite called get sprite for loot. Now note that this is not a private void like we've normally done for methods. It's a private sprite as the goal of this method is to get a sprite. Now this method will take in the loot type, so say it was a coffee that we're looking at, and now it's just going to do a search to find the sprite that belongs to coffee. Essentially we're just going to check to see if the loot type that was passed in, say a coffee, is equal to loot type coin. Obviously, a coffee is not a coin, so it will move to the next line. We're going to use an else if statement here, because if the first item was a coin, we don't need to keep going. So the else will block returning the coin sprite. Though if this was a coffee, it'll need to come to our second line. Now it recognizes that the loot type is in fact coffee, so it will return the coffee sprite. Now you'll notice here that we still have a red underline at the top here in our get sprite for loot. That's just because this is not a private void, meaning it is not allowed to return nothing. It has to return something. And if a loot type gets passed in that's not a coin, coffee, or burger, at the moment we haven't told it what to return. So at the very end here, we're just going to add one more line, and this will be a return null, meaning if a loot type has been collected that we don't have a sprite for, it'll just return nothing. All right, with that done, we are almost at the finish line here. We've now given an index to all of the pairs in our dictionary. We have assigned a image sprite depending on what type of item we've collected. Now we just need to make sure that we do the same for a quantity. 
Fortunately, this one's a lot easier. We will just look at the loot quantity, so say the first loot quantity, quantity zero, and all we want to do is make sure that that text mesh pros text is equal to the actual value. So if this is a coffee, we want to make sure that its text is equal to the number of coffees we have. We can't just put item value because that's an integer. We just need to turn this into a string so that the text actually comes across as text. All right, a little hookup in Unity and we are all finished. We just need to make sure that our inventory manager knows which sprite belongs to which item. I'll fix that little mistake I made earlier where I put the slot instead of the image into my loot image, and then we can test. You'll notice now that when we are defeating these enemies, our inventory is indeed populating with both the image and the quantity of the item that we've collected. Things are working pretty well. The only thing that remains at this point is to make these items usable, which is where we'll go in our next video. Until that time, I hope you found this one useful. If you have, please be sure to leave a comment down below or like or subscribe. Till next time, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.